Hello again. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate UV unwrapping and painting. The letters UV are intended to represent two dimensions. You could call it XY just as well, or 2D painting. You can see I've deleted the default cube and replaced it with Suzanne's head. I switched to edit mode, gone to front ortho view by pressing number pad 5 and 1. I'm turning off the option that limits my selection to vertices that I can see, so I'm able to select vertices front and back like this. I box selected all the vertices to the left of the central line, and the idea of this is that I only have to paint one half of Suzanne's head, and with the mirror modifier turned on, I'll get the other half done automatically. I've turned the option on again, which limits the selection to faces that I can see because it looks uh, more easy to understand. I've created an extra window and turned that into a UV and image editor window. I've selected all the faces on Suzanne's head and pressed U and then unwrap. The unwrap won't show up until I have an image in the UV editor. So I'm creating a new image now with the default dimensions, but I've changed the color to a medium brown. Zooming out with the mouse wheel, you can see the result of the unwrapping, and you can see there's a problem in the area that corresponds to the ear because the, the faces are very, very compressed. So the solution to this is to create seams, and it's helpful here to think about, uh, say, your shirt and how your shirt was put together with s several pieces of fabric that are connected with seams. So here we are defining some edges, selecting some edges in edge select mode, and these edges will become seams. This means in the UV image, the ear will be separated off and will be larger and it'll be easier to paint. The resolution will be better, there won't be any pixelation. I've finished selecting the edges that will become the seam, so I'm going to press Control E now. Control E, and then choose Mark Seam. Then I select all the faces and press U and unwrap. So now you can see the unwrapping is more successful because we have three areas. This area is the eye and we can see the top left shape is in fact the ear. I've just made a selection here to reduce, reduce stretching which may possibly be helpful. You want to make sure these shapes are roughly proportional to the size in the original object. You wouldn't want a shape to be small here that corresponds to a large area of the real object, otherwise the resolution would be poor. I've switched to an option in the bottom of the UV editor that lets me select the whole shape, and I'm going to move and rotate these shapes to make better use of this space to expand them a little bit, that will improve the resolution. There'll be less risk of visible pixels in the finished result. Control up arrow again to see the other window. Switching to texture paint mode. The tool shelf is open so you can see how I will be able to choose different colors for my paintbrush etc. You can also switch the UV image into paint mode and if I press N not T, N, you can see that there is a very similar set of painting options there and in fact they're connected so for example if I change the color on one color selector it will change on the other side as well. So there's not much point in having both of these panels open at the same time. I'm going to press N on the UV editor to close that 
panel and I'm going to start painting here. The eyes are going to be mainly white. I'm adjusting the size of the brush here by pressing F and then painting away and you can paint on either the UV editor or in the 3D viewport. It makes sense for the eyes to paint on the UV editor because if I had painted in the 3D view on the left I would have been painting not only the eyes white but also around the eyes would have become white also. So you can choose which side you want to paint on. If I turn on a mirror modifier we can see that the paint has indeed been applied to both sides of the head. And now I'm turning on a sub surface a subdivision surface modifier also. I've turned up the level of subdivisions as we normally do. This gives a smoother appearance to Suzanne's head. The eyes are white now and they should have black pupils. So I'm choosing a black color pressing F to shrink the brush size a little and when I have the right size I'll try to paint the pupils. Both pupils will get this black color at the same time. Looks okay. Most of the rest of the painting I'm going to do directly onto the 3D model. The idea of UV unwrapping is that you get this flat image which you can export to uh, specialized graphics applications such as Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or the GIMP. But it's also possible as you can see to paint directly onto the model in the 3D view and this avoids some problems. If you watch now you'll see a mistake to avoid because as I spray paint there on the edge we get some unwanted edges behind so Control Z to undo that and try to avoid making that mistake yourself. You can see it's possible to paint on either side of the mirror image of Suzanne's head. I'm going to make the nose black. As I make the nose black, you can see that when the paintbrush gets very close to the central line, there are some unwanted artifacts which we would like to avoid. And I will show you in a minute how you can avoid these problems. The problems happen because when the brush is very close to the center line, you're in fact painting the left hand side and the right hand side of Suzanne's face simultaneously, and that confuses the, the painting process. I'm looking at the modifiers now. You'll notice that in the stack, the mirror modifier is above the subsurf modifier. I've just clicked a button that changes the order here, and if you look at Suzanne's head, you'll see that affects the way the paint appears. So, is there a better way to organize these um, these modifiers. Well, the real solution to avoid the artifacts is not to change the order here. It is, in fact, to switch off the mirror modifier. Not to delete it, but to hide its effects, and there is a button for that. So, I put the mirror modifier on top, subsurf underneath, and going to do the mouth next. I haven't yet disabled the mirror modifier, so again as I paint the mouth you'll see some artifacts appearing. There they are. More artifacts. That button turns off the subsurf modifier, subdivision surface, but that 
doesn't solve the problem very well. The artifacts are still appearing. So I'm going to turn off the mirror modifier instead, and if you do that, you'll no longer get the artifacts. So you should probably turn off the mirror, mirror modifier when you're working very close to the center line. You can keep the subsurf modifier turned on. You can also adjust the size of the brush in the tool shelf by adjusting the radius and turning down the strength means that instead of painting on an opaque color you're painting on a very thin layer of color so that if you paint again and again in the same area the intensity of the color will become thicker and thicker as you can see. The idea of having these colors is to essentially make the the Suzanne head look more interesting and more realistic. Not that these colors are very realistic, of course, for this particular monkey. I'm just doing random shapes now to try to give Suzanne a more interesting look. UV unwrapping, by the way, is called UV unwrapping with the idea that U and V could represent two dimensions. Oh, by the way, what I'm doing here is trying to spray around the eye, but as you can see, it doesn't work well here as I paint on the 3D model because I get the eye as well as the flesh around the eye. So it's another example of uh, a time when you would want to open up the UV image and work there instead. By painting here we can get the dark brown around the eye without affecting the white part of the eye because that's a separate area in the UV image. We can see that the UV image and the 3D model are, of course, connected. Change one, you change the other. The new dark brown color was probably too opaque, so I'm going to reduce the strength to a more transparent brown. and try to make the edge less severe. With a very small radius I can try to draw some hairs or whiskers onto Suzanne's chin. I'm sure you can choose much better colors and patterns than I can. I'm also going to draw some fine reddish lines in Suzanne's eye.
to make her eyes look a little bloodshot. As I was saying, UV unwrapping, it's the idea of taking the the surface of Suzanne's head, which is three-dimensional, and unwrapping it to make a flat surface in the same way that you might take an orange and unpeel it. And then with the orange peel, you could put that flat on a surface, make a flat image. Once you have a flat image, you would very often export that from Blender into a program such as the GIMP or Photoshop or PaintShop Pro. Work on the image there, as those are specialized painting programs, and then import it back into Blender. But that's not quite the technique that I'm using here. The technique that I'm using, mainly painting directly on the 3D model, has the advantage that the, the seams are less likely to be problematic. I just pressed F12 to render the image, but I'm not getting any colors yet, and I'm also getting the typical black shadows that Blender gives because the lighting, the default lighting, is terrible with a single lamp. Three-point lighting with three lamps is already much better. So in top auto view, I'm moving a lamp, duplicating it with Shift D, and setting up two lamps in the front. It's a main lamp and a fill lamp, and in the back we have the lamp that will give hopefully a kind of light halo effect or silhouette effect to Suzanne. We see Suzanne looks brighter now when rendered, but we still see no colors. I've pressed number pad 0 to go to camera view and a good way to adjust the camera's view is to in the properties panel which you can open with the letter N you can turn on lock camera to view and you should be able to adjust the camera's view while that option is turned on I like to turn it off afterwards otherwise it's confusing Now we can see, pressing F12, that we have a closer view of Suzanne's head, but it still looks white. I've switched to Object View, gone to Materials, and if I add a new material and simply switch on the option Face Textures, now when I press F12, I can see the rendered image of Suzanne's head. Doesn't look too bad. In the modifiers I am testing whether the order makes a difference here with subsurf on the top and mirror on the bottom. Press F12 and you can see a seam on the top of Suzanne's head. So obviously the order here makes a difference and it seems to work better with the mirror modifier on top and the subsurf modifier underneath. That avoids the seam on the top of Suzanne's head. So the order of modifiers can make a difference. Thank you for your attention.